Welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast with Dr. Kevin Reese, where we examine the body as a whole unit and move people from health burdens to health miracles. So get your questions ready, because the show starts now. Good morning and welcome to the Peace Over Pain podcast. It is August 2nd, 2022, and I am your host, Joe LaChance. I'm here with the author of Peace Over Pain, Dr. Kevin W. Reese. Welcome, Dr. Reese. How are you doing today? Good. I took a really cold shower this morning. Oh, did you really? Nice, 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 nice. That'll wake you up. <laughs> oh, curling. <laughs> you know, the, I, I do cold showers here in the Caribbean, but the cold water here is not cold. Like, you know wow. what I mean? Wow. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a little bit different. But before we get started, I did want to remind people that we will be taking your questions at 1030. So if you have a question for Dr. Reese, you can leave them in the comments or if you're bold, you click that Zoom link in the description and you can be live on the air and talk with us here. Mm -hmm. So uh, so anyway, Dr. Reese, we're, we, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about injuries today, yeah. meaning, uh, you know, injuries that you could get playing sports, injuries that you could get falling off a ladder, injuries that you can get in everyday life. I have seen people injure themselves pretty, pretty heavily just from taking a step the wrong way. Sure. Do you know what I'm saying? Athletes so, do it all the time. Right. So, and sometimes you get an injury that becomes a nagging injury. You know what I'm saying? Somebody hurts their knee and they have pain in their knee for, for years afterwards. So, you know, and for me even. I had uh, two uh, compression fractures in my back right. that when I do certain activities, even though I do the posture exercises, when I do certain strenuous activities, still hurt in the two specific places, you know, like I can pinpoint where those compression fractures were. So these are the type of injuries, you know, and those happened years ago. So how do we avoid, how do we prevent, and how do we, you know, care for these kinds of injuries in a more holistic and, you know, approach? Well, majority is going to be posture related, but before we even get into posture, I want to say that nutrition plays a factor too. Mm -hmm. And so when our calcium and our magnesium, the whole calcium family. There's a lot of cofactors in the calcium family. Right. When, when our calcium family is not doing well, then your bones and joints aren't doing well. So let's get that out of the way. I can attest to that. Um, I, I, my doctor used to tell me that my bones for my age were very brittle. Right. And he may, he told me it was because of a calcium deficiency. And that's something I've been taking. Calcium is, I mean, all 90 essential nutrients are important, mm -hmm. but if you had to pinpoint one, calcium is the most important. Calcium deficiency can create up to 150 diseases. I, I get that too. I, I think I told you the story about my mom and how she had to be rushed to the hospital for a calcium deficiency right it was that critical yeah. so calcium is a critical min mineral yeah we got we got 200 bones right you know right it, it's, it's it's a big structure so yeah but, and not to mention your blood needs it yeah absolutely but yeah posture is the deal for injuries for the most part because muscles move bones right and Ultimately, it's the body that you bring to the activity that matters. Even something like sleeping, it's the body that goes into the bed. So it's, it's uh, the example I use in my book is Odell Beckham Jr., who blew out his knee in this year's Super Bowl last February. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't doing 
he wasn't hit. He 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 was just running and his knee blew up. And so, you know, of course we don't have his P rays to examine, but an educated guess would be his posture was off and he brought that body to the activity. I remember probably eight years ago, maybe the great late great Kobe Bryant. He was just dribbling in a game and making the same move he made a million times and boop, he, his ACL gone. So he wasn't hit. Nobody pushed him over. It's just, you know, when we're out of alignment and then we start getting into activities out of alignment, it's really only a matter of time before the body is just like, ah, you know, right. because it, you know, we want our ears above our shoulders and our shoulders above our hips and our hips above our knees and our knees above our ankles. And we want that, that nice straight line. And if more athletes knew about this, they would have a competitive advantage. If they made it a part of their routine, like how many athletes do you hear of who just get injured working out? Oh, you yeah. Know, and, just, and, it just happened to Cody Rhodes, the professional wrestler. I was thinking of that. And all he was doing was probably lifting the same weights he always does, the same way he always does. Yeah. But this time, he was tore the like pack. The last he tore story. the pack. Yeah, the last straw. Like, because he brought a, I don't want to say dysfunctional, but I guess say an out of a line body to the activity. Right. So, you know, who knows? More than, more than likely, yeah. And, yeah. and Rain Krause and I, who we're going to meet in a second, she and I, we evaluated Cody Rhodes' injury, you know, with the, with the blood and everything, and that's on video if anyone wants to see that. Yeah, it's but, up on the page. Yeah, more than likely, he, he brought an out of alignment to the gym, like you said. And, you know, this is, we see this all the time with runners, I was talking to this woman probably six, seven, eight months ago who, mm -hmm. you know, she blew out her knee in her late thirties and she needed reconstructive knee surgery. And her excuse was that she's a runner. She's like, well, I'm a runner. So, you know, huh. well, <laughs> it's the body you brought to the run. Right. You know, it, it's, we're meant to run. Yeah. <laughs> Human supposed beings to be good run. runners <laughs> human beings run i mean that's the deal like we can run jump and play I mean, that's what that's, the two legs are for yeah and and so you know if somebody has varus or valgus knees or their hips are, are messed up or you know even the shoulders being out of alignment could, could cause a knee injury it it's very we make it sound simplistic but you know it's somewhat complicated because you got muscles just pulling and when the muscles are out of alignment when they're when the muscles are not functional they're they're pulling they're they're doing this and they're doing that and the and the muscles can bully the bone right well here's what i see and, and you remind me of those those people who who get back injuries just doing simple tasks like raking yeah. Or, you know, just doing home, you know, things around the house and, and, and they pull their back out, you know, and they're out for days, you know, that, and, and, you know, it's the same thing. Well, why did you pull your back out doing a simple household chore? Yeah. You brought the, the, cause it's the body you brought to the chore. That's right. So, yeah. So, I mean, I guess what you're saying is, you have to start in order to prevent and avoid these injuries. You have to start with an aligned body. You have to start with a body that's properly functioning in both in two ways, both with your new, your, your nutrients, making sure that your bones are strong enough and then making sure that they are lined up properly, you know, and and, and like you say, just because you haven't been that way in the past, this is reparable. This is fixable. You can make it a part of your regular routine of workout 
adding an extra maybe seven to 10 minutes. So it's not something that's hard to do. And, uh, you know, and I think, you know, maybe now might be the time to bring on our guest who right. actually is our coach. Our postural with, therapist. Yeah. A postural therapist with the Peace Over Pain Clinic. And uh, it's Coach Rain, otherwise known as Rachel. And we're going to bring her on in a second. Yeah, and she was saying off air that uh, three-year-olds have the best posture, but then by, by the time they're six or seven, they're all... They're, they're all out of alignment. Out of alignment, yeah. Rain, how are you? Good morning. I'm good. Nice good, to Rain. See you guys. Rain Krause is a 27-year veteran of body work. She's trained in postural therapy and massage therapy, plus she holds master certifications in Pilates, Reiki, and the Alexander Technique. You ask her about a muscle. We dare you. So, Rain, how are you today? That's a cute little intro. I love it. Thank you for joining us. It's much appreciated. And you are involved with us here at the Peace Over Pain Clinic. I think people have probably seen you on the P-Ray videos that we post up there on social media. So it's a pleasure having you on the show. You heard what we were talking about with the injury. And, and I think like what, we, like what Kevin just mentioned, that we're born with perfect posture. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. And if you want to see someone with perfect <laughs> posture, look at a three-year-old, right? More or less. We're kind of born with, well, actually that's perfect. We're born with no posture, to be honest, because when you're in the womb, you're in fluid, right? So we don't even around. have kneecaps when we're born. You right? don't even have kneecaps. You're right. Yeah. I researched that too. That was, that was awesome. Um, yeah. Babies don't have kneecaps even because they oh, haven't wow. really formed them. They have kneecaps start as cartilage and then they turn into a sesamoid bone, which is a patella. But the concept of construction in the body, creating things and, you know, regeneration, all part of posture, all part of Kevin, all part of you, like everything we are bringing. But in terms of posture, anybody out there who has a kid, they are perfect once they learn how to hold their head up, right? Even the crazy uncle in the family is allowed to hold the baby after the baby can hold their head up. And I say that because there's always <laughs> a person at the family like you don't give it, don't give the baby to Uncle Steve, you know, not, not, not. <laughs> you know, it's that person because they're like, rrr, 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 and you're like, well, watch the baby. But once the baby can hold its head up, right? The, the spine has begun because we start as a curve, like a little baby fern. And we uncurl, right? And come being born, you're like, whoa, vertical drop immediately, gravity. And the baby's job is to lift their head up, hold their own head up. Once baby can hold their head up, we're building neck muscles, we're building spine muscles. At that point, a baby is a head and a big bag of organs and arms and legs, and they're super cute, but they don't do much. You know, they sleep, they eat. And then, but it's the head, you have a trigenal nerve here. So, right, if you do this even to any animal, they'll turn and follow it. Not so much us, but that's how, you know, we control with the bit, but the mouth gets signaled to eat. So baby has this will and desire to survive and needs food. Nutrition 101, we, you know, we had it perfect. And then we went to the store, but first we go to mom's boob, baby finds it and it happens. And these are all posture muscles beginning to get created. And I say that because people are always like, someone needs to fix me. Well, you came in perfect. You know, so sometimes people uh, are always like, I got to get fixed. I got to get fixed. No, I got to get normal. I got to get normal. No. How about we go back to natural before you entered civilization and we're told to sit on a chair for long periods of time. Right. And we I think, kind of yeah. allow that for children, right? We send them, we seek out the ones that let them crawl and play. We know in our hearts, the children need to move. And then what happens? Send them to school. And what do they do? Mm. They're, they made, they're made to sit for sit. Four, 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 three or four hours in the beginning. And then longer as they get older, 
And this is a day, five days a week. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're getting a little better, right? They let the kids, I have a nine-year-old, so um, they let them have fidget toys. They let them wiggle more. They let them move around because studies have shown that you can't have human beings sitting still for that long because sitting is just not good for us. Mm-hmm. And it depletes the brain. It deple- It's just, you can't work well when you're here all day. Like this is a lot. So if I do an hour of it, I'm, I'm, I know. And so a lot of podcast when I'm done, I'm like, Oh yeah. (laughs) So that's what we're really aiming to teach people is how to sit well, how to stand well, and then how to approach an activity well, hence bringing this body. And sometimes people start from the inside out, like our clinic is holistic. So someone might come here and be like, wow, I am an athlete. And then they start participating in a proper nutrition and they have like these inside tinglys, their posture, because their performance needed, they needed nutrition. They were a really strong athlete, but they needed nutrition. That's probably me back in the day. I always was an athlete and I was from Southern California and I was also always trying to be skinny. Hmm. So body shame, body shame, body shame. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a very, very terrible combination, actually. That's another reason why I'm here. When your posture is improved, so is your attitude about life, because you're balanced and you're grounded and you get an experience of mindfulness, of peace over pain, because there's a pause between your reaction and the stimulus. And as you do your posture menus, protocols, if you take time to talk with me, I'll answer questions or anybody here, because sometimes you might not fit in the box and that's okay. And we'll help you through that. When you were talking about the athletes, most athletes come into the world, like, you know, the really good ones where you're like, notice the head, right? But you're just, you're you're God smacked. You're just like, wow, they're meant to be an athlete. Yeah, traditionally look at their head position over their hips. Yes, the shoulders, but the shoulders will usually change relative to the sport, right? You got a lot of swimmers here. I got a lot of gymnasts here. You got the ballerinas here. You got the boxers here. But the shoulders are meant to do all sorts of things as long as the head and the pelvis are having a fantastic relationship through the spine. So we kind of go back to baby, like learning to crawl. Uh, if you didn't crawl out there, guys, it's time to learn to crawl. You need to learn to crawl. It's a right brain, left brain patterning. And there's so many first child overachievers who are probably sitting there going, oh, my mom told me I didn't crawl. I didn't crawl. Right? You know, there's the thing. There's a whole synopsis. And then the late crawlers, you know, so we have studies that show people who don't crawl have more of an arched back and anterior pelvis. They overdevelop their certain muscle groups in their hips faster than their spine because their parents were so darn keen on getting them up. They stuck them in those little chairs with the wheelies on them and they've banned those now. In the seventies, like, look, all the kids, now they won't let them use them anywhere in preschools because it's proven that it dwarfed their um, ability to to sustain their own bodies. Because parents were so keen on getting their kids to sit up and walk first and do things first. And we need to leave the children alone let them learn to roll their head. Rolling their head will make their spine work. Baby will roll over. Everybody will go crazy. That's why we all have to do the static back. Mm -hmm. The key protocol, right? You know, I'm sure if you've gotten Dr. Reese's wonderful little frog on a rock, frog on a rock. Yeah. Yep. Static back will save your life. And that's why baby spends a lot of time on back. Then baby rolls over and we get tummy time. Now we're doing extensors, Joe. Like that's how we start building tummy time. If you don't know what tummy time is, we're going to send you Cobra, our Cobra, not yoga Cobra. Right, right. right. right? Like, that's yeah, they do have, some of them, they have cute animal names. A lot of the moves have cute animal names, but they're not the yoga poses. But you know they're what? Not, but I said they're right. similar. They're as yeah. easy as yoga poses. Well, their origins come from yoga. I mean, we can't deny it. Um, but it also comes from a base of movement. Once you understand how anatomy works, you just understand that the the pioneers in the beginning didn't have MRIs and this and that and such and such, but they were acutely in tune with themselves because they lived it, right? You know, they ate well, they did this, they did that. 
And then we all know the story of the, you know, the runner that shows up out of nowhere who lives in a village, has no shoes, runs up and down the mountain for life, and they show up at the Olympics and everyone's just like, how, who is this person? Well, he's been living it. Like Kevin said, you know, we're meant to run, we're meant to walk, unless we've had a severely traumatic injury where you're like, oh, wow, I'm missing a leg. Yeah. Maybe you're not running so much, you know, but or still, yeah. you can, depending upon where you are, but civilization has pretty much destroyed our posture and that yeah, yeah you made a good point first of all the parents who are pushing the kids almost not to crawl oh God, and crawling know. is an important part of our development like because you're right it, it helps you learn your motor skills and and put your posture in line so that's a detriment to the child's develop and then like you said putting them in school right away sitting them in a chair and not only does that continue through 12 years right then it can be on and another really four super if civilized going, right and ask, then as dr reese how's your posture phd man <laughs> and <laughs> and then when you get out of college or whatever what do you do you go to an office and what do you do all day Sit down. You sit in front of a desk. So you're in this mm -hmm. seated posture for at least six to eight hours a day since you're a child. And, and or you take a standing pos uh, position of service because usually um, our caregivers, our nurses, our teachers, oh, right. and our then doctors, hunched over. Uh, um, they're usually rotated. They usually have a strong rotation because they have to service somebody who's sitting, right? So if, you know, dentists, God love them, uh, perios, one side all the time. Um, so sometimes um, it's called repetitive stress syndrome. It actually has a name uh, and it's just wear and tear by doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. My, uh, he, my cousin is a mailman. Yes. Good and one. He had, and he, his Carrying rotator, his rotator is ripped. Torn. Yeah, so he that's a, a, that's yeah. a, from that's, carrying the bag on one side. No, from, from doing the mail like this with one hand just out yeah. the window. Oh, wow, poorly. He must have been doing it poorly. <laughs> well, there you go. He took that kind of body to the activity. But you know, this is making a, so much sense to me right now, and I hope it's getting through to the listeners. Well, I always have my little guy here. If you need to understand the body, <laughs> you can, you know, yeah, you a lot there's of lots this. of ways to start understanding the body. You there's move, there's movement tools. We've got all sorts of things for you, but I'm willing to spend as much time as any person needs to accomplish their goal through this program with ease because, um, I have one leg shorter than the other so that the audience can hear that. I'm going to tell you my story. Is that okay? Because I, I think that's a like a synopsis. Do the questions, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how'd you get I, into it? Yeah, let's hear it. I just feel like sometimes <laughs> people always say, "Why do you? Why are you here? And why did you do this?" And I was seventeen yeah. years old. I was an athlete, and I was a basketball player. I'm about five eleven, and I played volleyball. And I was an avid water skier. And we grew up in Southern California, so if you know the area, like we were there, Mission Bay, every morning. That's what I did. I was a slalomer. And um, the irony is it was built for my body. That's another sub story. But there's always, you know, water skiing was great for my body. I had a rotation, an anterior tilt, and a really strong erector. So I looked like a gymnast, but I it was poor posture. I had asthma as a child, too. So <sighs> breathing up here, not diaphragmatic. And so I started off life not breathing well. And then I had this traumatic injury at 17 where the prop of the boat ran over me. Dramatic pause. And that really, um, ooh, see, there's emotions around that. Time with Mark will take care of that. Um, <laughs> that's why I say, guys, it's Salute. the whole package. There's no way you can separate it. Mm -hmm. us. You can't separate us. Like, that's the whole thing. We're, we're sentient beings. So I'm having a little moment with that. But yes. Um, I was skiing, the boat went into reverse, it didn't turn off and I was run over. And it was happened that quick. So that's why I say we can have accidents of no fault of our own, right? 
you can have repetitive stress uh, activities. You can be a primo athlete. Everybody can have something happen to their body at any minute. We all know this. So I had this injury happen and the short long is I've had five foot reconstructions. For those of you who enjoy football, my, my foot surgeon was Terrell Owens, a uh, foot surgeon. <laughs> and if that name means anything to you, some people are like, whoa, but that's what I'm saying. If you have to enter the medical monopoly, you research your people. It took me seven years to find that surgeon, two years on a waiting list and following athletes like Terrell Owens' success story and then getting in there. Most of us are not an advocate like that because they, they don't know the medical people work for you. And if you don't like them, you can fire them and walk away. So I did that for years. I didn't walk fast because my leg didn't work, but I had the injury. Somebody put it together. I walked on my leg for seven years, so 17 to about 26. Growth plates start setting at 28. By the time I was 28, I couldn't walk. My foot had fused into a massive amount. Uh, I mean, that was it. My big toe was a big ball of arthritis. The propeller had gone through my foot, so it went through my big toe, through all the muscles in my leg. It spiraled. Luckily, the blade was nice and sharp. Uh, didn't break a bone except my big toe, which was kind of hanging there. And most people don't realize, but your big toe, guys, is so important because mm. it's this tiny little joint that you have to walk through every step and it must bend 65 degrees for proper gait. So there's rules, right? We can't, that's, that's just body mechanics. So if your toe doesn't bend, your ankle does this and then your body does this. So I created this serpentine way of walking and I was in excruciating pain. I was 28 years old. I just wanted to die. I'll be really honest. I was like, what good is having a leg if it doesn't work? And I was like, just cut it off. Like at least then I could get like a groovy graphite bouncy thing and like run. Cause I couldn't run. I couldn't walk. I sat on the sides. I couldn't even walk on the beach. It was excruciating. And anybody out there, you can hear it. Anybody out there with arthritis, I got you. <laughs> you don't have to explain it to me. At a very young age, I sustained a tremendous amount of pain. I'm in less pain at 50 than I was at 28. So my journey is the medical monopoly, like what you guys are saying. How many PTs did I go to? How many doctors did I go to? How many surgeons literally would come in with the file like this? Look at the file. Look at me. Look at the file and be like, you're so lucky. You should just be grateful for what you have. <laughs> and I was like, I am grateful to be alive, but I would really like to be out of pain. Thank you. What can you do? Yeah. And they would just literally, I had one older doctor pat me on the head and tell me that I was really being overly dramatic, like a woman. Granted, he was quite old, but I even realized that like I was not being taken serious as an athlete, as a female athlete. They were just like, eh, whatever, she'll grow, you know, it's a bunion. Eh. I'm like, no, it's not a bunion. It's a capsulotomy. I'm missing my sesamoids. It went through my, you know, I knew more about the, my leg than my surgeon. And that's how my story started because I realized, oh my goodness, surgeons cut, PTs try to put it back together. Everybody's got like 20 minutes for you. You have to fit in an HOM prescription, nothing. Whew. So I spent years in physical therapy. In fact, they gave me a gold card just as a joke because I went to PT for my neck, for my shoulders, for my back, for my hips, for my knee, and for my foot mm. because I had a kinetic chain of pain and I just had to keep getting a new prescription, a new prescription. Yeah. And finally, there was a running clinic in Charlottesville, Virginia, and it's at UVA. And this particular doctor is an orthopedic surgeon who runs. And he had a personal opinion about it. So I, again, went to him, asked him to do all these tests. He's like, you're good. You're fine. All your nerves are intact because some things you don't know. So it's like, okay, my body has the complete potential to regenerate and heal. I just need to find someone who speaks my language. Mm -hmm. And he did. And he's like, you have what's called a kinetic chain problem. You know, that moment, that first time when you feel like I've been heard. Yeah. Right? Because I was like, my left side of my neck, I know is connected to my big toe. He's like, of course it is. Again, like, 
I don't have to argue this principle with you. And you yeah. can even see it in my own disposition. Like my head can do this, but not as good this way. It's just years of walking crooked. So he sent me to this one PT I will uh, forever be grateful for who would give me books and educate. He's like, cause I was annoying too. I'd be like, why, why, why? <laughs> so you guys can ask me why, and I won't blow you off. If I don't know it, I'll go look it up. And that's what he did for me every time I'd be like, but why? And he'd be like, hmm. And he'd bring me articles I didn't have access to because I didn't have that medical clearance to jump on those really good places. Again, why we're so available to all you out there because sometimes you can't even get in the conference, right? Like he would go to these PT things and bring me back articles on Pilates and posture and all this stuff. The medical people were like, oh, we, we noticed those people out there are doing really well. Hmm well, let's look again, you know, it's like taking them forever. And then they need to put it in a prescription and then they need to give it enough. Well, it takes so long, but through that arduous time, like everybody has their story. I learned, I, th I basically went to PT school because he challenged me to fix it. He was like, if you're not happy, fix it. He was right. kind of a coach, kind of mean guy like that too. There was no like, oh, rain, I'm so sorry you're hurting. He's like, are we going to cry today? Are you going to cry today? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to cry today. He's like, okay, three minutes. You get to cry for three minutes. He's really tough, like Peter Goscu, Marine style, like we're yeah. going to do this. But it was but good. He was said, inspiring you to take responsibility, right? I want to swear like it, but I'm not going to. But yeah, he was giving me the like, you get to have a pity party for that long. And then the rest is up to me because I had the potential. I was just in so much pain. I was so beaten down at that point. I was so broken. I was only 28 years old. And um, I had the, and finally my PT looked at me and he's like, you need surgery on that big toe at that point. And it was just like, why? And I'm going to put that out there, right? Because a lot of people are going to say, should I get surgery? And I'm going to say to you, if you have to get surgery, you interview the surgeon, you make sure everything is great. And then you do your posture therapy and you do your nutrition and you do, you prepare for the surgery. Like you're going on a vacation or a trip. Like don't enter it. Like, Oh, I'm broken. And the surgery is going to fix me. No, it's not. I'm just going to walk out crooked again. So that's why I love talking about this because I had my surgery and then I immediately had to have three more just because it was crucial to do the alignment. I have what's called an osteotomy, which is he took that big mound of arthritis and he sculpted a joint out of it for me, which is unheard of. But again, a surgeon that looks at a person, like a person or an athlete, hence I, I went to the best of uh, sports, stay away from like people who don't want to talk about movement if you've got to do this. And then um, he followed my career because I got faster than any person he'd ever worked on, like including athletes. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, well, this is what I do for a living. He's like, you told me you were a dancer. I was like, well, kind of, but you know what I mean? I was a mover. So he built my foot for me, literally built it. And then I had to relearn to walk. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, it started with all these things you said, but I would say posture therapy, when I added that to my big skill of things was the one that was like, quick, fast, accessible, and it made sense, right? It starts from the inside out. We've already discussed that. You started on this planet, perfectly balanced, traditionally. So we're doing the inside out because a lot of people are like, there's only three exercises here. Right. And you're like, yeah, how many times do you brush your hair a day, right? It doesn't have to be dramatic. You just have to kind of clean up in the morning, do your exercises, maybe at move lunch, on. Right. move on. So I guess that's the long, short version. And then I had many other issues, but I come to this work as an athlete and an asthmatic who was constantly uncomfortable in her body, always carried weight, still do working on that one, but that's why I'm also here. And that has much to do with the poor fours, guilty. So guilty. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie, like me and ice cream have a relationship. So yeah, it's okay though, because well, ice cream doesn't have gluten. <laughs> it has sugar. There's gotta be a sugar. Sugar's in there. not on the poor four. You go. Oh. <laughs> I think 
think you just became my guy. No, high five there, Joe. High five. You got to look at those poor four. There's no oil in ice cream. No, I, I have There's to no learn. glue in. Sometimes you, you got to look close at the ingredient. But that's yeah, another some question. of the like the cheap brands, they put like oil in it, like Walmart brand or something. You don't no, want no, no, that. No, no. You want good ice cream. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, then that's a really good point, too. And then that all becomes a part of body. So before I was present with myself, I'd be like, you sneak. You're like, oh, I'm going to eat my ice cream. Right now, I'm like, I sit down, I sit really well, and I'm like, haha, I'm about to eat my emotions, but boy, am I going to enjoy this, <laughs> right? Because I come to it presently, and I'm like, me and my mint chocolate chip ice cream. And then ironically, here's your first lesson in posture. I know it's been drinking water, Joe. Pick up your cup for me, love. Go ahead. Now take a sip of that water. Okay, watch Joe drink. It's empty. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> but anyway, I put Okay, but here's ahead. an interesting one. Most of us, when we're doing anything, eating, drinking at the computer, we bring our head to mm, the down. object. So, I mean, mindfulness and all posture stuff. So, but the irony is I can stay perfectly here in my posture, sitting on my sits bones, my head over my shoulders, my shoulders over my hips, my knees are forward, my feet are on the ground, and I have one leg crossed in a figure four stretch or in a his assisted hip lift. Because truly what I want people to start to realize is posture education isn't just that quick bit. And I know Kevin and I will probably do some great things where it will do like posture city or I want to put vignettes up for you because honestly, this is where it comes in. You bring the glass to your face. You don't bring your face to the glass. Oh, computer, you, right. you bring your body to the computer from your hips, but most of us just bring our face because here's our body, here's our head, here's our eyeballs, right? Glasses, right? Here's little dude's eyeballs, right? So what happens is the power of the eyes, we see things. We go back to the baby story. Baby sees a red ball over in the corner. Baby wants that red ball. Baby works so hard with their will and their head and they're looking and they go and they don't, baby doesn't go with the chin. Baby takes the whole body and takes off and everyone goes, right. they're crawling. Yeah. But what I see is a head and a spine going for what it wants. That's your first will. You know, you want something. We all go, yay, baby rolled over. Baby's so smart. Heck yeah. And then if I was that parent, I'd put a red ball over here. I'll make sure I put one on the other side so they get balanced. I'll put one in the back. But you see what I mean? Our will and our head and our spine control movement. Our pelvis is the power and our arms and legs are the other. Most of us think our arms and our legs are in charge. But they're not because if you lose an arm, you're good. You lose a leg, you're good. You break your neck, no bueno. You fall on your skull, bad times. Break your pelvis, argh. but you can, you can break your arm and you can sustain. So when you're talking about injuries, we're talking also about how, which parts are not working. Right. So I guess that's the whole gamut in a big nutshell is I'm here because of an injury. I was an athlete, but I also couldn't breathe from the get go. I really think it's important for people to understand that sometimes the things we ask of them are natural things your body can do. And fear sets in, and then we actually create a list of all the things we cannot do. I can't get on the floor, my knees are bad. I can't do that, I can't do this. And then the highest percent of suicide in our seniors is when they can't get in and out of a chair. I mean, that's the statistics. Once a senior can't get in and out of a chair, can't get off of a toilet, can't get out of the bathtub, can't get up, they become extremely deflated yep. because they've just lost their independence. Yeah, they lost and their, their situation is they're like, oh my God, I could die on my toilet because I can't get off of it. And I know that sounds silly to young people out there. No. But just ask someone older. I saw it happen to somebody. Yeah, yeah it, it's true. As soon as they lose their mobility. And I'm going through it now. You with my can dad. count. You can count the days almost. It's yeah. sad. 
But yeah. listen, um, Rain, this has been very enlightening. I want to thank you. Uh, we're yeah. going to have to move on to our questions, but please... Uh, if anybody wants to retrain, obviously you can reach her through the Peace Over Pain Clinic, correct? Um, and um, she can get you can get in touch with her through the email there. Am I correct, Kevin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. But wait, there. Kevin, tell us. Tell you're having some problems with your uh, calves. What's going on? With my calves? Yeah. They're all right right now. <laughs> uh, all right, they're all right right now. Okay, good. Yeah. All right. I was going to spot check him right here and right now. <laughs> I'm terrible to go to like the amusement park with. I'm like anterior rotated. I bet that person has knee problems. <laughs> it's very fun slash addicting. All right. So we're going to be back with our questions right after this message. Have you read have Peace Over Pain yet? This short but powerful book reveals how to eliminate chronic pain and or illness faster than any other known therapeutic approach. Download the Peace Over Pain book for only $4.95 and gain instant access to the ebook version, audiobook version, and a video training with Dr. Reese. Go to peaceoverpain.com and start reading or listening right now. This is the information you've been praying for. That's right. You can you can get the Peace Over Pain book at Amazon.com or go to Peace Over Pain. All right, Kevin. So we have a few questions this week, um, and most of them, as a matter of fact, all of them stem from a, a reel that you put out on Instagram a few days ago regarding diabetes. And so we know diabetes can be a very sensitive subject for people. And I think you did touch a few nerves, but it also got people talking and we did get some questions. So I wanted to uh, run these by you and see if I can get your, uh, you know, get your answers so we can talk to our listeners. So this first one comes from Brady Neeb. And it says, what can we do about type one diabetes? What does it mean for internal organ health over a lifetime? And he wants recommendations on how to slow the internal aging slash wearing process of organs. And then he says, other than exercise and eating healthy. Well, I mean, <laughs> what else is there? <laughs> Go ahead, whoever wants to answer. I got both of you on. Well, We're talking exercise and eating healthy. There we go. Well, type 1 diabetes is a birth defect. So it can't be reversed. Type 2 can, obviously. That's what my video was about on Instagram. Type 1 is a birth defect. Hereditary, can... hereditary illness. Birth no, de... no. Okay. No. Birth defect. Okay. It, there is no such thing as hereditary. It, and from my viewpoint, uh, there's nutritional deficiencies when mama bear and daddy bear are deficient and they make little bear who's now deficient because they were deficient, but that that's not genes. So we can make a type one diabetic feel better and live a better life. Same thing with spina bifida or even somebody with Down syndrome. Those are birth defects. And so we can help them. But we can't reverse that. Type two diabetes. That's very that's different story. I mean, yeah. Six weeks flat. Easy. So how about the organ uh, aging process? How can I mean, you slow it down? Because I guess that happens well, with uh, diabetics. So how can you? Well, what, yeah, yeah. Well, how can you slow down your internal aging process of, of your organs that I guess that happens with type one diabetes. Well, I mean, we can work on your telomeres, your telomere health, which is part of your DNA. We do have products that do that, but I mean, it's, it's just an overall lifestyle thing and, you know, doing postural therapy and having good nutrition and working mindfulness and putting it all together. You're going to you know, your organs and your glands are going to be very happy with you if, you, if you're doing that, staying off of the poor forms. Right. 
Right. So, Rain, do you agree that maybe some postural exercises could actually help uh, with the internal aging process of your organs? We've already established type D, type 1 diabetes really can't be cured, but you can alleviate the symptoms of it a little bit. Yes. Yes, absolutely. It can. Because, well, if you think about, we go, we were just talking about repetitive stress injuries, right? We usually identify them sometimes like my wrist hurts. I have carpal tunnel, repetitive stress. Maybe I'm a register person, but our organs get repetitive stress too. But we don't have as much of that relationship with our insides until they're not working, right? Mm. Um, or if you get pregnant, that was like, everything was working so well, but I had no idea that I could even create life. That was amazing for anyone who gets to do that. Sorry, guys. But, you know, there is this incredibleness of like, you don't appreciate the vastness of what our organs can do until you see them grow life or take life or make things complicated. Um, in this business, I've been working at it 27, 30 years. My oldest client was 101 when she died. Mm. She was amazing. And the only thing she actually had was um, direct, I don't even know how you get the little food caught, diriculosis or little things, seeds, things can get. Diverticulosis, so I job. know it well. <laughs> and that is something that happens in our older people because they get compressed, right? So depending upon what we were doing per week and lengthening her and getting her just to be more upright, she was brilliant already. She was, uh, she went to the ashram at 40. So I got her at, she became my client at 80. You know what I mean? Like she had already been living probably what Kevin would just be over the moon with because she was old enough to still make her own yogurt. You know, she was born in the 1900s for goodness sake. Right. She was a very, she walked everywhere. She never drove a car. But the story about this I share is she was religious in the sense of she did her static back every day, mm. every day, static back, static back, because static back alone is a universal, right? It's a position. And if you guys out there are listening, they're like, what's static back? If you've been to a yoga class, it's semi-supine, right? If you or semi supine or legs over the chair in easy rest, if you've gone to an Alexander conference, we're talking about rest position. And if you're talking to PTs, they're going to just tell you you're lying on your back and put your legs over a chair. But this is a universal shape. And again, a little bit about babies. I go to the babies because I want people to remember you came in great, unless you have, as Kevin said, a birth defect. And that's not your fault, right? That just came. But it is your fault if you came in really, really great. And you've taken your body for granted, like most of us do, and you just won't find five minutes, and this is where I get tough and debatable, to lie on the floor and put your legs over the chair that you are willing to sit in all day. Like, it's nutty for me. Like, it doesn't take that much time. And then people are like, oh, I can't get down on the floor. Do you have a table you're willing to get on? You know, a lot of people have very expensive, large oak dining tables for their entire family, and nobody uses it once a year for Thanksgiving, right? Go lie on the table find yourself something harder surface than a bed. Why? Because when we're in a gravity position, when we lay our spine down, immediately the nervous system will calm. Babies on their back versus babies on their belly. It's work to be on your belly. They got to work, put them on their back, snuggle them up, they go to sleep. We're very similar. If you lie down on the floor, put a little book under your head. If you're someone who lays down and your chin's quite forward, that tells us your upper trapezius and levators are very big. So you need to put a little pillow or towel, little, so that your face is in alignment. So then your neck is over your shoulders, your shoulders are over your hips, and your hips are bent at 90 degrees over your chair, right? So we take your body and you sit all day like this. See, he has a stick up his butt. <laughs> this is part, right? But we lay you this way. And people are always like, well, what's that going to do? Well, if you're going to sit all day this way, you know, shake up a bottle of soda or pop or something, right? You can't just, if we turn it this way, all those organs now are doing what? They're getting to lay down back against the spine. They're getting to open up and widen. Every disc in the spine is regenerating. Everybody's getting fluid. They're having a nice wash with the dura tube and the fluids and the spinal fluid. Everything's working better because of the vertical load. Instead of the body needing to be this way, 
the spine doing whatever it wants. Maybe the head's going like way forward and the shoulders are all rounded. And this person's just like, Ugh. tremendous pressure on the guts all day long. And then they lie down and for a brief minute, everything's gonna stay like that. And then with gravity, they start to move and lengthen and widen. Why do I mention this one? My allegory story is, because I've been doing it long enough and I repeat, I am 50. So a lot of my clients have aged with me, uh, you know, when I was 20, you know, they were 50, now I'm 50 and they're what, 80. Um, and now a lot of them are not my clients anymore because some have left the planet, but I swear to you, all of them every time would do this and they'd always send me a letter or a note or a phone call. I can't believe lying on the floor like this just feels so darn good. I just want to stay here forever. Because they're usually the people who are like, I can't get on the floor. So once you start just doing that, you start realizing you give yourself permission to lie on a floor. You give yourself permission to even be an example of that because most people at four o'clock, sometime between two and four, they get tired and then they go into the break room and they slump up in a chair and they kind of smush down and they grab something sugary and they get that extra coffee and they're like, okay, I just gotta make it to the end of the day. Or they do the other one where they go outside and they huddle in a corner and freeze and smoke a cigarette and drink a coffee. But no one, unless they're really doing what we're doing, might have this moment where, wow, I'm really feeling run down. I think I'll do my lie down for five minutes and get back mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. But that's what we hope for you because that diabetes one person who's saying, what can I do? What can I do? You can do that. I can't fix your diabetes, but I can certainly give you tools to help restore everything else. And that's what he was asking. And that's what we're I asking guess organ for damage, well. right? Yeah. And that's yeah. not exercise. If that person's going to say, well, that's exercise when, I mean, I'm asking you to lie down on the floor for five minutes. And yeah, that's why we don't call it exercise. We call yeah. it postural therapy. Yes, sir. The yeah. other little story is I had a nun who did her posture protocol for her most of her life. And she used to tell people about it. And <laughs> And she used to say, well, if I'm on my knees all day for God, I need to get on my back for me. But she meant that because she was in service all the time and she was really hurting. And so we just got her to do that. And then she got all the other nuns doing it with her. And it was just this powerful thing to watch nuns doing lie downs or static posture, you know, doing prayer. And it well, was, that's just, right. that's it was insanely beautiful and it, it works because it doesn't take a lot. It just takes a little faith in yourself, maybe something a little higher power if you're, if you need that. So and that's, that's what I would say is, is don't make it too hard, put it where it's comfortable for you. And if you can just get on the floor and throw your legs over that chair, you sit on all day. And, and I think both Kevin and I could attest. Yes. I challenge of that. Of you. I do it every day, most of the time, twice a day. But, you know, it's, it's just a good way to take a break, like you said, yeah. rather than go hang out in a chair and do whatever. Let's go for a poor four, right? Yes. All right, Kevin, one more probably before we go. Here's one, and this was asked twice, actually. I'm not a diabetic, not even a little, but I know a few people who are and would like to share this with them. What are the two nutrients needed to fight diabetes and i and mm -hmm. and i guess you kind of teased it in the in the video but you never said what the two nutrients are so well, i guess they're asking you to come clean on the podcast yeah it's vanadium and chromium but it's you don't fight the disease with these two nutrients they said fight right is that what i heard needed to fight diabetes yeah, yeah there is no I, fight. I, yeah you're right about that no that's their uh, words not mine there that's that's the problem isn't it it's a battle not a peace offering they're deficient in uh vanadium and chromium and that's what makes the body not be able to handle sugar and right. so it's sort of a tag team effort you're deficient in those two nutrients which are minerals and then all diabetics are sugar monsters. They're addicts. And so they're jumping from pancakes to potatoes, to candy, to cupcakes, to bread. And it's constant. And, you know, typically they eat like 
they eat like an athlete. They eat like six, seven times a day. Yeah, they're hungry a lot. They're jumping because they need their sugar. Is that because of the deficiency? Like that, like they think the sugar is going to make up for that deficiency? Is their body craving sugar because of those mineral deficiencies? No, it's the their blood sugars is is the insulin in the blood sugar is not like a normal person. So it it's just an instinctual. Oh, we gotta we need we gotta sugar. raise it. Sugar raises it, right? We need right. glucose. We need it. We need it. And and so their their um their blood sugar is going like this. And what's happening is that's messing up their circulation. And this is why a lot of type two diabetics end up on dialysis. And they losing their toes. Yeah, yeah the, the circulation problems. And that all stems from the, the uh, deficiency in those two nutrients specifically. Yeah. But Obviously, you want to have the other nutrients in the proper levels as well. Right. There's 88, there's 88 more nutrients. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's all about getting on the plan. And this is why on Instagram, I don't just come out and say, yeah, just take these two nutrients because people will actually go to CVS and be like, where's the nutrients? Where's the, because and try to find those two. <laughs> everyone's looking for the magic pill and right. not going to reverse diabetes from a magic pill. You're going to reverse it from an overall lifestyle change. Right. Right. I got one. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say too, uh, as well, movement for diabetes. I know a lot of diabetics in this too. Um, unfortunately, I have a lot of friends with it. And after they lose traditionally three toes, they call me. I have one friend pass away this year, all diabetes related, you know, all they, they could have done something and it's like very painful to watch. Mm. But my one friend is working really hard on reversing her situation. And so just to add on to that position, something she does when in her static back, um, she is heavy. So half of just the exercise of getting up and down I'm, three times a day, I'm like, good for you, right? Because she's let it go too much. Uh, just lying there and doing things like the point and flex yeah. of the feet, doing the circles. And, you know, it seems so silly but you're, you could change so much there because at that point you're doing muscular skeleton, moving blood, moving lymph, moving the feet, putting them above the heart, you know, having this moment of, you know, like what Kevin's talking about, trying to bathe the whole body with health and reversing something. Part of that comes with reversing how you sit all day. And again, I just go to that image of you were here, put you here, right? So your body has the opportunity to even get that help with, against gravity because the feet on the diabetic, like they often don't feel things. Mm. They step on them. Neuropathy, yeah. All that. So even just making a habit of loving their feet, getting on the ground, moving their ankles about, maybe looking at their feet, checking the sores because stuff happens when you don't pay attention. Yeah. And I think that's really what this clinic is helping people do is come for a peaceful time with things that might not make them feel great with a support group like ourselves saying we're here for you we see you we hear you we're not trying to just give you a prescription and send you away we want to educate you on how to become your own best nutritional specialist right your own both personal lexicon that you're building up in your body as you're learning how to move and how to eat how to be kind to yourself and then knowing you're not alone you've got this amazing community because if i've learned anything from covid being stuck at home really made me realize there's a lot of people who would really like to be a part of something like this but they can't get to it and then i met kevin in a in a class actually and he was telling me of his dream and i just was like oh my goodness sign me up because i love that we can help more than just the amount of people I could see in a day. You know, this is so exciting to me because I can only do so much and I'd like to do more. And I know all you guys on this team wanna do more. And I just think it's very exciting, this future concept that we could help people all over the world, period. You know, like we could help each other. And I, I think that would make the planet a better place personally, and we would all feel better. And there's a butterfly kind of effect, right? Like. If I model good posture, my child models it. Yep. My child is the future. 
Okay. I think that's a great way to wrap it up this week. Um, Rain, it's been an, an excellent, excellent visit. Kevin, I think next week, why don't we just do the whole show on diabetes so we can kind of talk about it or unless we have another guest, but we'll figure that out. Anyway, follow us, uh, come to Peace Over Pain. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, we will see you next week on the Peace Over Pain podcast. Thanks again. Thanks for watching the Peace Over Pain podcast live inside our clinic's Facebook group. Be sure to submit a question or comment for next week's show at peaceoverpain.com. Also, perform some goodwill and tell a friend in pain that you found their solution. Refer them to the Peace Over Pain podcast and the Peace Over Pain book and help them move closer to their miracle.